About eight years ago, I realised that climate change was actually one of the key issues that was going to threaten future sustainability of organisations. So I started to actually put my attention in that area. And it was a really glorious time because you had Al Gore with the Inconvenient Truth, you had Kevin Rudd saying, you know, this is the issue of our generation. There was a sense that we'd find some big solution to this very big problem. But a couple of years in, I actually had a light bulb moment. I was sitting in a seminar and one of the participants got up and he yelled at the presenter, I know there's a problem. I'm here because there's a problem. What I actually need is a solution. And at that point, I realised that we really needed to change our focus from thinking about the problem to about how we were actually going to practically implement and develop solutions. And the key to this for me was the practitioners and working with them. So what I did was I started to collaboratively work with people in state government, local government, and also private organisations. Thank you. And with them, I decided that there are a number of challenges. And the first one that I found was that most people actually didn't understand the risk. And that's because it was systemic and it actually sat outside of the frameworks that they were using. Also, because it was systemic, it was really dynamic. And this meant that changes happened very quickly and that they were continuous. So it wasn't actually just a change to climate change. It was continuous change. And this was leading to uncertainty. And there was uncertainty about the science. There was uncertainty about the future. There was also uncertainty for people wanting to invest because the benefits were far off into the future. And the ultimate outcome was that nothing happened. There was also a high level of risk when you went into implementation. Firstly, because if you implemented the wrong action or if you actually implemented it in the wrong way, you could increase the risk. There was also a high level of unexpected outcomes because there was innovation throughout the whole implementation process, particularly with new technologies being used. It also required a whole of organisational approach and quite often a beyond organisation approach where you had government researchers, organisations and private industry working together to, to actually figure out what to do. And this required large scale social change, particularly where you had traditionally siloed structures. The other aspect of this was that the communication was very specific because implementation was context specific, so it had to be suitable to the task, the audience, and the geographical context they were working in. So really, it, you had to start thinking, not just as an organisation, but as a researcher, about thinking about doing things differently. So I took an innovation approach to actually developing a solution. I worked with the practitioners, and what I did was mapped all of their processes and worked with them and fed them back bits of this framework as I was developing it for feedback, and then we released it on the internet. Now what this did was allow them to identify the key areas of their organisations where they could look for resources and where they would already have pre-existing tools that might be useful. Secondly, I developed an actual process for them and I mapped in innovation because they were already using that technique but it wasn't identified. I then attached a number of frameworks that had been tested through industry and also through the governments for communication, knowledge exchange, and most importantly, for integrating decision-making processes with the research and the new knowledge that was emerging. What I didn't anticipate when I actually developed this was that it would actually have further application in other fields. It's had uptake in areas such as emergency services, economic research, areas of government, and also in sustainability. And that's because they're all dealing with this type of systemic way of thinking. But ultimately, I've only just scratched the surface. And that's because climate change is actually a people issue. It's about the way we live our lives and it's about the consequences of that. But more importantly, on a personal level, it's actually about the people we love. It's about the things we love. And this problem is going to keep evolving and we are going to have to keep finding solutions if we want to be able to maintain and sustain these things now and in the future. Thank you.